Okay, as fears mount over the economy, as uh, heading uh, the, that the economy might be heading towards stagflation, our next guest says that the current economic scenario is nothing like the stagflationary environment of the late 1970s. For more on the markets ahead of the busy week that we've got this week with the earnings and the Fed's policy meeting, we want to bring in Ed Yardeni. He is the president of Yardeni Research. And Ed, this idea that it's not going to be just like the 1970s stagflation is a pretty good one on a Monday morning. Makes us feel better about this being a Monday. Explain. Yeah, I want you to feel better. Look, uh, I think last week when we got the GDP report, uh, the, the knee-jerk reaction was that uh, the data was stagflationary because real GDP was up only 1.6%. Uh, but a lot of that was because uh, we imported more and we also see, saw this inventory accumulation, the, the final demand in the economy was still actually very, very strong. Uh, in addition, the, uh, there was concerns about the uh, pickup in inflation during the, the first quarter. I think some of it was kind of funky January, February effects, uh, but we still do have a problem with the so-called super core inflation rate, uh, which is the consumption deflator for services, excluding energy and including uh, excluding shelter. Uh, that's kind of stuck around three and a half percent recently, uh, but I, I think that's going to come down. Uh, one of the problems we have on the inflation side really is uh, auto-related. Auto-related insurance and uh, repairs have been a, a real, real problem on the inflation side. I don't know that there's much the Fed can do to repair your, your car or to offer you auto insurance, but uh, that's that's bound to slow down. It's just been on fire for so long. So all in all, the economy is still doing well. On a year-over-year -year basis, we're still seeing a moderating trend in inflation. So I don't think this is stagflation at all. You also don't think that the markets are going to continue to melt up, though. And that, that, that from your perspective, is a good thing, the idea that we may pause for yeah. a while here. Yeah, you know, just because uh, I, I, I would like that doesn't mean it's going to happen. But uh, I actually was concerned that the market was going up too fast and that it was being led by the valuation multiple, and we got the forward PE and the S&P 500 up to 21. Now we're back down to about 20, so it hasn't been that much of a correction in, in the PE. But I wouldn't mind if the PE just kind of stayed here for a while, and uh, it was an, it turns out to be an earnings-led uh, bull market from here on. I think for now we, we could very well just pause. Uh, the market still, I think uh, th there's a expectations for two uh, rate cuts still in the market, and I think we need to be disabused of that notion because I don't think there are going to be any rate cuts this year. But, you know, the market's also looking a, a year ahead, and a year ahead sometime into next year, uh, there, there could be a couple of rate cuts. What, what surprises me is you've got a pretty strong forecast, even though you're talking about a pause here. You've got a strong forecast for where the S&P will be for the end of this year, yes. not to mention where it's going in 2025 and 2026. Yeah. You want to lay that out? In fact, let's bring back up the S&P 500. Right. You can see how far we've sure. come since November. Yeah, it's been extraordinary. And uh, look, it's been my opinion uh, since uh, November of 2022 that it's been a while here that uh, we're in a bull market. Uh, the bull market had a nice run from that point uh, through, um, you know, la last year, last last August, uh, and, and now we, we've seen a we saw a correction there for a little while. Uh, then we made a low on October 27th of last year, and it was a vertical ascent almost in the market. It, it was feeling like a, a melt-up scenario, and now I think it's just going to be a pause for a little while. But I still think that the underlying earnings story is a solid one. Uh, I think the valuation multiple is a bit uh, high, but I think earnings can lead this market up to 5,400 by the end of this year for the S&P 500, 6,000 next year, and 6,500 uh, by uh, 2000 and, uh, you know, 2026. Uh, the 25 and 25, uh, 26 forecasts are not really all that bold when you kind of look at the percent changes, but they sound pretty good. Yeah, they sound pretty good, and I, I guess you're calling for a pause, not a pullback. Would a big pullback Correct. surprise you? Well, I mean, we have had a pullback, really. Um, I guess from the peak on March 28th, we saw the market come down uh, below its 50-day moving average. It was down 5.5%. I was thinking we could get a 5 to 10% kind of correction, not, not an official correction of 10% or more. Um, and I think we, we may very well have, uh, have seen it. Um, but I think from here on, there's still the geopolitical uncertainties. I know the market's suddenly acting as though, you know, all is well in the Middle East and between Russia and Ukraine. Well, we know it's not. Um, maybe what the market figures out is that even if these situations continue to deteriorate, 
Um, as long as uh, the supply of oil isn't affected coming out of the uh, Straits of Hormuz, uh, that uh, there's plenty of oil sure. available even in a geopolitical uh, crisis situation. Great. Uh, Ed, thank you. Ed Yardini. Thank you.